Right, the main event, putting the whole thing together. So let's start with our flap and let's put our, our magnetic closure in. I'm just showing you how I'm doing this. I'm marking up to find the center of the closure, which is about three quarters to, to an inch up from that bottom edge. And it's halfway in, so I'm finding halfway the width of my flap. So I'm just using a chalk wheel, which probably needs more chalk in it, to be honest. And then I place, I place the washer from the magnetic closure on top of the fabric and mark the two lines which I need to cut to place the prongs of the first section. So there we go. So that's the boy side of the closure. There we are. And then I want to find the center of this panel. So half, halfway widthwise and halfway height or lengthwise. Okay, so I need the, need the center. And if you look really carefully, you can actually see the center there because it actually is a diamond for the cross hatching. Again, I'm marking my two little holes for the prongs by using the washer of the, the magnetic set. I'm slashing two little holes. I don't slash very much. Try not to cut any of the stitching if you possibly can help it. And then feed that through. Let's put a washer on. I fold mine out. So that is what this is going to look like. There we go. And your flap is slightly, ever so slightly smaller than the perimeter lines of these um, two panels, ever so slightly. Right, so let's pin the seam together and stitch the seam. There's no matching, just the top and bottom perimeters should be in line. Okay. Yeah, so just make sure you get everything in the right place. Nothing worse than stitching that and find that your your magnetic closures in the middle. You don't want that. Okay, so let's let's just stitch this together. Because see, it's sitting in, just it's sitting in like a bare eighth of an inch. You can hardly see it. Now I'm stitching from the back, so I can use my per my perimeter stitching line from my embroidery as my guide, because I don't want to see that off on the right hand side, so I'm stitching from the back. And just stitch inside that out the outer line. Needle just grazes around along the stitching. That gives you a half inch tad more. Half inch seam. So when it's opened up, we don't see any stitching. Okay, so that's the flap on there. We've got the middle. We want to do the middle seam. Just match our end lines. Stitching just inside the perimeter stitching line. That seam needs to be pressed open firmly. Right, having pressed that seam open, let's start by making a stack of the dividers. So let's put all the dividers into a stack on top of each other. I've got two different colors, so I'm sandwiching the middle one. And then with the longer stitch, just we just want to actually put all those edges together and stitch them together, basting them together so as they stay formed. We don't want them shifting around. Then we'll grab our first side, so the opposite side to the zipper. We want to apply this, the stack of dividers into place. 
And I'm just going to do, you'll just base those into position. They're all even. And they will be sitting in again another eighth of an inch in from the perimeter stitch line. We don't want everything involved with their outside last seam. Um, can you see that? It's just they're sitting in. If they get stuck, um, if they're too close to their outside stitching line on the very ends, they're going to get caught when we try and sew it all together. Okay, so now we're going to sandwich our, our um, dividers in between our two zipper panels. That's going to be quite thick, so I do a few stitches forward on the thickness, turn around, come back. And then stitch all the way through. Sometimes I find it easier to actually turn my work when you're when you are stitching up a step. It's easy to turn the work. So okay, there we are. Dividers are sandwiched inside that seam. Okay. And I like to just open my zips halfway and just stick them down. I don't know where they are. They don't, they're not going to worry me if they appear suddenly. Right, so we're going to put our side gussets onto this. So these need to be placed so as that they are central. This one here, I don't know whether you can just, you can't really see it there, but it's, it's, this, the, 8x8 eight eight or 6x10, the top of that gusset sits in line with the zip teeth. The 5x7, um, that, that edge of the gusset sits about a centimetre or 3 eighths of an inch down. Had to do that so I can accommodate the hoop. Try and get that line, that, that centre line of the gusset on the inside, that marker line, try and get that line with the actual join of the panel um, when we're putting when we've sandwiched those dividers and there's a seam just that needs to try and be in the center otherwise we'll find that the dividers will be a bit lopsided yeah so that's what that's what's going to happen okay let's put the other one so the gussets will over the those curved edges at the top the gussets do overlap but they don't they don't really once they um once they are all into place. So again, do the same thing. Match with where it's supposed to be. The gusset is governed by how tall the dividers are. If you wanted shorter dividers, you're going to have a shorter gusset as far as length goes, and it won't be as wide. Okay, so let's stitch that on into place, and I stitched it on with um, the normal the normal foot, but to be totally honest with you, a zip foot would be probably easier for the seam. I'm only stitching within the seam allowance, I'm not going my true half inch, because my true half inch I'm going to use when I actually sew the actual back and front onto this because it's going to be sandwiched inside. It really is only a placement for, yeah, it's only a placement um, for this gusset. Not into true position yet. Now the inside lining is slightly shorter than the outside um, shell. That's because we want to try and ease these outside seams a little bit. Okay. I open, I make sure that all the gusses aren't stacked on top of each other. We've got two one side, one the other. So that's what's going to happen there. 
that's how it's going to be. Okay, so we need to actually... Let's work with this long edge first that's not got the flap attached to it. We're going to stitch that together. Now when I come to stitch that seam, I sometimes... See there's, can you see there's a difference in width? There's a difference in width and a difference in length because we want the seams to try and turn themselves into the inside of the wallop when it's finished. Otherwise the seams will look a bit bulky. Now sometimes I do trim out some of that excess stabiliser, but I don't even make that decision until I am sewing. So I've sewn that seam. Okay, I've sewn that seam there. Give it a bit of a press. And that seam allowance can have some understitching along it, or it can be, just depending on what you're doing as far as colours go, That seam is the first seam to be done. Now before we go too fur much further, the remaining edge of our lining panel, the one that's still free and not stitched, turn it under to the stitching with the iron, just a little bit there. It will help you do the hand stitching at the end. Very hard to see this. So we're going to do that next seam. That's the next seam. So leave that open. We're going to do that next seam, which is going to be the flap end. Okay, so let's, here it goes, turn our flap in. And what we want to do is we want to sew to two to three centimeters at each end. So uh, an inch, inch and a half max, maybe inch and a quarter at each end. Because we want to leave a hole in this top seam where the flap is to pull the work through when we've finished. So we do the two end seams first and then we do the side seams. We don't just do, do a square around. It's just not it's not advisable to do that. Here, see I'm just trimming a little, little bit of the stabilizer off there because I'm just thinking that's probably a little bit firm. If it's too thick, it's gonna be too hard for you to turn under and just slip stitch, hand stitch that, that seam back to the flap. So match it all up, seam city on top of seam. And using, I see I'm using a zip foot. And I'm going to sew just for two to three centimeters, inch and a quarter ish, out to the edge. Reverse, finish. I'm going to go over top of it again. I'm going to do it twice. I want it to be quite sturdy because it's going to be have a lot of tension on it um, when we pull this through because it's quite a firm project. So stitching it twice just stops any of the unexpected popping that can happen uh, when we turn through a project. Okay. So now we've got side seams. The best thing to do is match your centers first. Center seam, top, center seam, bottom. Now I turn my seams to the underside if I can. At top and bottom I turn them, roll that seam allowance under. I'm using my zip foot and I'm stitching just inside my perimeter. Now, we're sewing towards the flap with this one, okay. Put some more pins in. I'm not, I'm used to actually layer, layering and, and using my fingers to do this. We're using our zip foot so as we can get close to that stitching without it riding on top of the flap. Now I see the flaps poking out and then I'm just, I've just pushed it in with my fingers. You can fold it in half if you want inside the work. Hold that seam open. There shouldn't be any pleats or anything even though the underside is shorter. I'm just checking to make sure that flap's not been caught and it hasn't. 
Now I do these side seams twice. I stitch them first, and the first row of stitching is generally a little bit wobbly because you're doing this manipulation to try and get everything sitting in place, and it never looks straight. So then I go over it again once everything has been held into place by the first row of stitching. It makes it look much neater on the outside. Just. Right, so we do a second row. Right, so what we need to do now is just trim off our corners. And I just trim out my seam allowances on that. That's the base seam of the lining, that one that we seam now. Um, and then I do the, the other side, the base seam for the exterior there we go i don't trim anything more back though no, i don't trim my seam allowance back narrow i don't do any of that it doesn't need to have that done right now here's the test so we pull our flap out first Okay, put your hand in and push the corner into your hand and grab hold of it and pull it up a little bit. Do the same with the other one. Now gently, don't let them go, well, I've let them go. Try and gently ease the whole wallet over those two corners. Woohoo. There we go. It's a bit of a tug of war, but it does happen and it does work. Right, let's get a pointy something. Let's get in there and push those corners out. They actually will come out by themselves quite easily. They're, they're, not, they're not hard to, to fall out. They, they will come out quite easily. Nice sharp corner point, corners. We've got no bulk in the corners. Let's trim. Let's just push that one up there beside the flap. Right, there we go. Take my tape off my zips because they've come undone when we're pulling them through. Right, let's just, I generally undo my zip. And then I pin that. Remember, we, we pressed that seam before we actually did anything about joining it together. You can actually stitch in the ditch through there and catch the top if you if you're a brilliant machinist. Um, you can do that quite easily. I'm just slip stitching that closed because it's just easier. My first sample I did, I did stitch in the ditch and it worked fine. The second one I couldn't get it to do it because the fabric was too too um, too soft. I do have a thimble, I just couldn't find it. I'm going to use a double thread in my needle. Right. So you wouldn't know where that was. You could actually sew that seam closed and actually leave an opening in the bottom of those dividers. There's no reason why you couldn't. This is the, this is the, the I won't say the trickiest bit there, but it's the, the bit that probably will get your vocab going. I'm just going to pin those into place to show you. But really, you should start with the center one and then get that into position. And... Oh, 
I fiddle and fidget with these for ages. Right. So you can see that little opening at the bottom. That's what you want to be, that's where you're stitch, going to be stitching down to, and you want that to be all nice and neat and uniform at that bottom piece. I would never do this in reality. This, I would do one side first and then the, uh, the other. I would never have the pins in both sides there because you'll end up being the human pin cushion. Now, if, you're, if you struggle to do this with your machine, just stab stitch them by hand. I've seen some people just put rivets in them. Right, so let's have a look at this. Open the zips up so as we can actually have a little bit, we can sort of slightly open up, or we'll slightly pull our seams, our base seams away from each other so as that we've got more of that divider exposed. It's very hard for me to show you this because it, you should be, you'll be able to see it in a minute, I'm sure. So what I'm doing is I'm wrapping, trying to wrap this gusset around the seam all the way through. Right. You basically have to wrestle with it. You can use a zip foot or you can use a straight stitch foot. I used a straight stitch foot for the first one there, yeah, but I actually did um, on my the next one I made, I used a zip foot. I found I could get closer at the end. And I'm still going to stitch. You can stitch almost to the last three eighths. And it's from a half inch at the top to quarter inch at the bottom. So that's the first one. And then you go back, roll it down all the way down, and then do the next one. And so on. I've tried starting from the bottom, working out. It is much easier doing it this way. If you are really if you are struggling with this though, then, yeah, then baste it into position, then sew over your basting marks. And one more. Okay, there we go. We're looking for a uniform bottom now. If you found that you haven't quite got those to the very, very end, needle and thread and just do the last few stitches on each one at the base um, so as they're all nice and uniform. Now let's, with the iron, let's press this into submission and create our stack of pleats. Now, they are angled in. They are angled in. They're not the the dividers aren't as wide at the base as they are. Sorry, and the dividers are narrower at the top of the dividers than they are at the base because I wanted those pleats to sit inside the wallet. I don't want them hanging out, especially if you have them loaded up with all the gear that people have their wallets loaded up with. Um, This is such a fun project, um, but just take your time in it. Can't wait to see your fabrics. Hard to believe it's done on an embroidery machine. Have fun with it. <laughs> <laughs>